Welcome to the Totally Awesome Top 25 Retro Games of All Time Countdown Reveal, where Dantron 69K, Wolfman, Eric, Wales, and Endgame Arcade present their combined Top 25 list from the first console generation until the seventh console generation, which includes PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and Nintendo Wii. From number 25 down to number 1. Sit back and enjoy. Number 25, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Sega Dreamcast. What can I say? I like fighting games. So you know darn well I had to have one on this list, and I get the privilege of talking about one of my favorite 2D fighters of all time, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and it is a freaking work of art. From the first time I saw it up until today, it still has one of the most varied rosters, amazing visuals, quick twitch gameplay, and an as-of-yet-never-repeated attitude. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was also a showpiece for a powerful piece of gaming hardware in the Sega Dreamcast, and boy did that piece of hardware flex its muscle. So much fun and laughter to be had with this game, which is not only iconic, but also set the standard for any of today's modern 2D fighters, which I would put this game up against any day of the week, and I am super pumped it made it into our top 25. Number 24, Mega Man X, Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Up next, we have a game that took an already popular series to the next level. This absolute hit was brought to you by Capcom. I'm talking about Mega Man X for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Gone were the childlike sprites of the original series. Taking place a long time after the original Mega Man, you were no longer up against the deranged Dr. Wily. This time, your enemy was Sigma, a reploid gone maverick originally created to help people, and he wasn't alone. Sigma had recruited other reploids that had gone insane. You were no longer Mega Man built for peace. You were Mega Man X, a maverick hunter whose mission it was to save the human race from robots gone mad. Mega Man X had better level design, bosses, story, music, and graphics. It was just an overall upgrade to the Mega Man series. Fans of the original Mega Man weren't quite ready for what was in store for them in the X series, but once it hit, they couldn't get enough. The original Mega Man X spawned eight sequels as well as some spin-offs. Can you take control of Maverick Hunter X and gun down the renegade reploid army of Sigma? Number 23, Mass Effect 2, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, PC. Mass Effect 2 is an action role-playing game developed by BioWare and was a direct sequel to the original with a stronger emphasis on third-person shooting mechanics and improved visuals. Because Mass Effect was designed from the ground up to be a story-driven trilogy of games, your fully voice created character, squad mates, romances, and choices both small and large carry over with your save file and impact the game in numerous ways, depending on your conversations, who lives and who dies, and how you decide to navigate the Paragon and Renegade morality system. Mass Effect 2 included a focus on action, world building, exploration, and innovative dialogue wheel to create engaging and complex conversations that you could steer in a variety of different directions, and of course the epic story and all the choices, decisions, and consequences that went along with them across not only Mass Effect 2, but also the entire trilogy. One of my favorite parts of Mass Effect 2 are the loyalty missions, which are important to gaining the trust of your squad members for the game's intense suicide mission, where your bonds with your teammates and your decisions not only mean life or death and success or failure for the climactic ending of Mass Effect 2, but also help shape your roster for the final game in the trilogy with the entire galaxy at stake, as any and all members on the mission are at risk including yourself, so make sure you choose wisely. And while Mass Effect 2 is the game that made our list, I strongly recommend playing the entire trilogy in order multiple times so you can see the maximum impact of all of the choices and decisions that you make for yourself, your squad mates, and the overall story. Number 22, Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest, Super Nintendo Entertainment System. No monkey business here. The Super NES includes the wonderful Donkey Kong Country trilogy. The first is a classic. The second is best in the series, and the third is just plain <laughs> literally. 
This 1995 platformer used the same tech from the original, which used pre-rendered 3D imagery making the graphics pop as you control Diddy Kong and Dixie Kong. Rare Studio was on its A game, creating 52 levels on Crocodile Isle with eight different locales. It is widely regarded as one of the best 2D platformers ever made. People love the gorgeous graphics, the unbelievable soundtrack made by industry great David Wise. Just listen to songs like Bayou Boogie, Jib Jig, Mining Melancholy, Snaky Chanty, and Sticker Bush Symphony, which is like the spiritual successor to aquatic ambience in Donkey Kong Country and is one of my favorite songs of all time. The control is tight-knit. It must. When you play platformers that require precision jumps like the Donkey Kong Country games, the gameplay is important as you try to defeat King K. Rule and rescue Donkey Kong. Thank God for checkpoints. The game is tough as monkey balls. You must use the different abilities of Diddy and Dixie, as well as animal friends such as Squitter, Rambi, Ratley, Inguarde, and Squawks. Environmental effects throughout, underwater parts, mining carts, vines, honey-covered areas, bonus games, Cranky Kong, Wrinkly Kong, Swanky Kong. This game has it all. Don't be a monkey's ass. <laughs> Play this game now. Number 21, Mortal Kombat 2, Super Nintendo Entertainment System. The next game in our top 25 countdown comes from a franchise that's easily recognizable with two simple words. FINISH HIM! That's right, I'm talking Mortal Kombat, and specifically for this countdown, Mortal Kombat 2. Mortal Kombat 2 was released in 1993, one year after the original. And unlike most sequels that can't hold a candle to the original, Mortal Kombat 2 surpassed its predecessor with flying colors. It expanded the roster from seven characters to an even dozen, and also expanded the finishing moves from one per character to two per character, and some characters having three if you were really good at the game. It also added friendships, babalities, and also expanded from one pit finisher to three pit finishers. Mortal Kombat 2 picks up right at the ending of Mortal Kombat 1 where Shang Tsung has lost the tournament, also with the apparent death of Gore. His boss and emperor, Shao Kahn, is none too pleased, and decides to enter the fray to get the job done himself. The game was ported onto many numerous home consoles, but the one we're picking for this countdown is the Super Nintendo version. It had large sprites, beautiful colors, the control layout, the six button SNES controller was amazing, and it was very, very much improved from the first Mortal Kombat on Super Nintendo. Done away with is the sweat, and the blood has been added as it should have been. So if you haven't played this game yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. Hop into battle and fight your way to the top. Flawless victory. Number 20, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, PlayStation 2. Another game in our top 25 comes from a franchise that had to be included, and I'm talking about Grand Theft Auto. Specifically for this countdown, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Vice City was released in 2002 for the PlayStation 2 and a year later for Xbox. It followed in the footsteps of its predecessor, Grand Theft Auto 3, in terms of gameplay, graphics, and storyline, but also surpassed it with better weapon options a bigger map and open world environment, and lastly, its soundtrack. Man, the soundtrack for this game is one of the best out there. I'm dead serious. Every time I ran by Flock of Seagulls plays, I can't help but think of Vice City. This game is set in 1986 and is loosely based off the Miami area along with references to Miami Vice and the movie Scarface. You play as Tommy Versetti, a mobster who was just released from prison but was caught up in a bad drug deal. You seek out revenge for those responsible and over time build your own criminal empire. The game is extremely fun with more cars and better driving physics, deeper missions, and more melee weapons. Instead of just your fist, a hammer, katana blade, and chainsaw were added just to name a few. I don't know about you, but the idea of running around with a chainsaw and using it on cars and people with blood splattering on the screen was oddly satisfying. So see what kind of mobster you can be and give Vice City a play. <laughs> Number 19, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time, Super Nintendo Entertainment System. 
This game was debated back and forth, but ended up making our top 25 countdown much to my happiness. And that game is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4 Turtles in Time for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. This port of the arcade game was released in 1992, one year after the arcade version was released. This game is a side-scrolling beat-em-up that is the sequel to the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game. You play as one of the four main turtles like in the previous game, Leonardo, Michelangelo, Donatello, and Raphael, each with their own strengths and attributes. You battle the usual suspects from Dimension X, Shredder, Crane, Bebop, Rocksteady, countless different foot soldiers, and mousers through ten totally awesome levels. This port of the SNES was, in my opinion and many others, far superior to the actual arcade version. This is a rarity, let me tell you. There are many reasons why I feel this way. The arcade had seven total levels, while the SNES had ten, changing two levels to bonus levels while adding a new Technodrome level. It also added four new bosses, the Rat King, Slash, Bebop and Rocksteady took over for Toka and Rezar, who were moved to that new Technodrome level, and finally you face off against Super Shredder in the finale. It also allowed for the ability to throw enemies at the screen at will, whereas in the arcade it just did it randomly. So definitely play this gem on the SNES, you won't be disappointed. Alright dudes, let's kick shell! Number 18, God of War 3, PlayStation 3. Okay, boy. The next game is the PS3 game God of War 3 from 2010, made by Santa Monica Studio and published as a PlayStation exclusive. One could say that Kratos has become an honorary mascot for PlayStation, who has been seen in two PS2 games, two PSP games, four PS3 games, including compilations, one PS4, one PS5 game, a compilation on Vita, a guest character on Mortal Kombat, and a playable character in PlayStation All-Stars. This is a hack and slash third person action event adventure loosely based on Greek mythology. This game is a direct sequel to God of War 2, and you play a very pissed off Kratos as he claws and mauls through gods in trying to enact revenge on his father Zeus and an abandoned titan Gaia as he performs scorched earth policy on everything trying to find Pandora to help him open her box and have his bloody revenge on the Olympian gods. This third-person game offers slick combos-based combat, magical attacks, alternating weapons, more enemies, new camera angles, and even DLC. The graphics blew my toga and undie straight off due to a tremendous sense of scale and one of the greatest opening boss battles in a video game, a la Poseidon. The soundtrack is epic and the blood flows like the River of Sticks. The gameplay is tight, action intense, and even has light puzzles to solve, and platforming sections with tight jumps and climbs. Hailed as one of the greatest games of all time, nothing is more satisfying than using the Neiman gauntlets to smash Hercules' face into a bloody pulp. Grab the Blades of Exile and join Kratos on his bloody revenge romp as he uses his new combat grapple, an option to batter ram foes, find the 10 godly possessions hidden throughout, try the new challenge mode, a combat arena, and special bonuses like skins, concept art, and a making of video. Let the blood flow! Number 17, Super Mario 64. Nintendo 64. All right, tell the truth. Did you ever throw the baby penguin off the ledge? Yeah, <laughs> you know you did. So what am I talking about? You know it's Super Mario 64. As far as a 3D platformer goes, this game was unmatched at its time and still holds up today. The semi-open world castle, the landscape, the scope and scale, the jumping in and out of paintings into other worlds, not to mention the amount of secrets and hidden areas that could be found. This was the top-selling Nintendo 64 game for a reason. You know, some modern games have you playing the same levels over and over again, and guess what? They feel like the same levels over and over again, but not Mario 64. You could play the same worlds, going for different stars, and have to play that world entirely different. It felt fresh, but familiar. Yes, the camera's a little funky, but it's functional which was a first for 3D games at this time. And I am super excited that it actually squeezed its way onto our list. Here we go! Number 16, Bioshock, 
Xbox 360, PC. Bioshock is a first-person shooter with stealth and RPG elements mixed with survival horror. It came out in 2007 by brainchild director and writer Ken Levine, published by 2K. This game was critically acclaimed for its storytelling, characters, world building, and creative art form. I remember reading about it and wanting to try it. And when I did, boy was I hooked in one of the most memorable games I'd ever played. I may be going down a rabbit hole here, but I found some connections to the ingenious writing and plot. I just popped the red pill. Here we go. You play as Jack, guided through the underworld utopian city called Rapture, built by a Rockefeller-esque businessman, Andrew Ryan, a la Jesus, and his godlike complex, who built a society for the rich that was beyond the control of government. This allowed for the arts and sciences to explode. So, the Bible says rapture is the second coming of Christ. It's blissful. Discoveries in science led to Adam, a DNA-altering substance. This allows the player to use plasmids to become superheroes by using powers such as telekinesis and others. Players can also use Eve, which are syringes to restore health. Players get powered up with Adam from destroying or liberating little sisters after defeating their bodyguards called Big Daddies. Big hulking enemies in scuba suits with drills and cat-like speed. Adams are used to purchase plasmids from gatherers' garden machines a la the Garden of Eve. Adam and Eve. A poor man rose up and began a violent revolution against Ryan. His name, Atlas. The same Atlas who sided with the Titans against Zeus, a.k.a. Andrew Ryan. Each side used splicers, humans with plasmid-esque powers. This all-out war caused the beautiful rapture to be the war tour, dystopic society, civil war with countless deaths, Adam abuse, a.k.a. drugs, and a few survivors you will meet. What a brilliant way to weave the Bible, Greek mythology, robber barons, and a class struggle into an immersive, narrative-driven game. The graphics are awesome, but the world of Rapture is where it's at. It's time for you to experience the ecstasy that is Rapture, one of the best video games of all time. You won't put down the controller. This game must be experienced by all. Number 15, Gears of War, Xbox 360. The seventh console generation introduced gamers to high definition graphics. Paired with robust online co-op and multiplayer capabilities, and no game showcased these two aspects better than Gears of War, developed by Epic Games, running on Unreal 3 Engine on the Xbox 360. While Halo was an already established franchise, and Call of Duty would soon morph into a juggernaut franchise, the new IP, Gears of War, stood above its shooter peers with dark and gritty atmosphere, in-your-face characters, and innovative third-person shooting cover-based mechanic gameplay, active reloads, over-the-top weapons, and brutal gameplay. Gears of War had a story campaign with an interesting emergence day premise that could be played both single-player or two-player co-op. It also had a fun assortment of competitive multiplayer modes and maps in an era where players were just excited to be able to play together with friends and strangers online, a game that they all love. I will never forget the first time that I played Gears of War on my friend's Xbox 360 and his high definition TV. The HD graphics just blew my mind and I went out and invested in not only an Xbox 360 and the Gears of War game, but also my own 57 inch HD TV to go with it so that I could be fully immersed in the experience. It was a big investment, but absolutely worth it as Gears of War and the HD era of gaming were game changers. And seriously, who doesn't love a good chainsaw kill? Number 14, Resident Evil 2, PlayStation. What? X gonna give it to you. He gonna get no way. Another Resident Evil game? Look, it's not my fault, everyone, that they made these awesome games. However, the one that I'm speaking about now is at the top of the mountain for me, and it's Resident Evil 2. Resident Evil 2. Let's run the clock back a minute, and anyone that has played through the first Resident Evil, you know, you realized how great it was, and it was something special. So you could understand the excitement when they heard that there was a Resident Evil 2 on its way. What they didn't expect was that Capcom took some of the best ideas and themes laid in the first Resident Evil, like tank controls, terrible voice acting, and an exploring element, and built upon those to create a timeless survival horror masterpiece. If you don't believe me, and somehow you haven't been exposed to this game, do yourself a favor and start it up and play the first 
30 minutes. The opening CG full motion video cinematic and subsequent interactive tutorial is something to behold. In this game, you follow two independent characters, the newcomer, Leon S. Kennedy, and Claire Redfield, Chris Redfield's little sister. Leon's just trying to live his best life, trying to get to work at his new job. Claire, not having heard from her brother in a while, decided to drop in and give him a visit. Bad idea, bad move, Claire. One of the cool and unique aspects of this game is that each individual character plays and moves on a different path, independent of one another. You can choose to play as either Leon, who has his own entire story, or Claire, who has her own unique situation. And as you progress through the story, you get to interact with one another at different points as the stories intersect from time to time. They will visit some of the same areas, however, they will have some unique areas that are specific only to their story. And you gotta think about this too, are you gonna be fighting and avoiding Mr. X, a huge huge unstoppable walking calamity or a former scientist turned Hulk like abomination in William Birkin. Both stories are very well done and enjoyable. You'll find yourself visiting various locations, solving puzzles to acquire items in order to progress, all while the constant threat of the undead and running out of ammo. But once you make it through and beat the game with both characters, you're greeted with one final battle, which is a pleasant surprise. And depending on how you performed, you'll receive a playthrough grade. Score high enough and you'll gain access to other unlocks such as weapons or unlimited ammo. You may also gain access to the hunk or tofu playthroughs, which have their own smaller, unique stories that you'll get the opportunity to try out. Become the master of unlocking some amazing memories by experiencing this one for yourself. Claire! Leon! I'm okay. Head to the station. I'll meet you there. Okay. Number 13, Mario Kart Double Dash, Nintendo GameCube. New game, who dis? It's-a me! A racing game, and which racing game, you say? Only the best Mario Kart ever created. Mario Kart Double Dash. Look, <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You pick a racing game and it's Mario Kart, and on top of that, you picked Double Dash. Oh ho ho, those of you who are uninitiated. This multiplayer co-op gaming titan lords above all other console battle arcade style racing games. Not only did it have amazing graphics on the Nintendo GameCube and System Link, but it also had a very unique function. Two players, one cart. Yeah, you heard me right. Don't be dirty. You heard what I said. This is the only Mario Kart that has had that capability, and it's what sets it apart from the rest. You must play as a team to win. You can't just depend on one person to drive and one person to handle the sliding because of the unique power-up situation. The driver initiates drifts and the rear guard engages the drift and throws items. This forces a kind of ballet and swapping driver to passenger back and forth to throw items, which adds a level of depth not found in other arcade battle racing games. It had a great roster of characters as well as a large selection of carts to choose from. This game also holds some of the more memorable tracks such as the madness known as Baby Park, the chill Fantastic Peach Beach, and my personal favorite, Daisy's Cruiser. And just like any other Mario Kart, it has multiple modes for you to enjoy as well, such as solo or tandem play, co-op, as well as battle mode, which is a great way if you want to ruin friendships. Don't sleep on this one. Check it out and thank me later. Number 12, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, PlayStation 2. The third installment in the legendary Metal Gear Solid franchise focuses on a brand new snake, Naked Snake, who will one day rise to become Big Boss. This is a prequel to Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2 and takes place during the Cold War era. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater took the iconic tactical espionage stealth action gameplay from the original and enhanced it with a new outdoor jungle setting, which allowed for an innovative camouflage system where players could obtain and equip different face paints and uniforms that, depending on the combination, will either aid or hinder Snake's ability to blend in with the environment. There are plenty of other new gameplay elements as well, including hunting for your own food in order to replenish your health and stamina, the ability to mend your wounds and broken bones with resources that you find in the environment, and the new CQC, Close Quarters Combat, which is a technique passed on to you from your mentor. Classic staples return such as the codex system, which allows Snake to communicate with his teammates over the radio to find out additional intel, 
tips, more about the characters themselves, and also the ability to save your game. Stealth still reigns supreme. If you're discovered by the enemies, they'll call in reinforcements and relentlessly hunt you down. This is especially punishing on the harder difficulties. Hideo Kojima, the mastermind behind the Metal Gear Solid franchise, is back with even more tricks up his sleeve, including fake death and revival pills, torture sequences to escape from, forcing the player to come face to face with everyone that they've killed over the course of the game, and ingenious ways to end a boss battle against an ancient sniper in the jungle, or even a clever way to finish it before it even begins. But the very best parts of Snake Eater are the characters in the story. Layered, complex characters like Young Ocelot, the Insane Cobra Unit, Double Agents, Triple Agents, and a world on the brink of nuclear war. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater is a masterpiece and a tragic tale of how far a soldier is willing to go to complete the mission what sacrifices must be made, and find out the true meaning of loyalty to the end. I've been waiting, Snake, for a long time. Number 11, Final Fantasy III, Super Nintendo Entertainment System. In the early 90s, if you were looking for a game that couldn't be finished in one sitting on the first go-around, an epic adventure with a multitude of characters, each with their own unique backstory, music so good it's been scored and played by bands and symphonies all around the world a story within a story so great that it's been made into an actual opera then look no further than this pick of course i'm talking about final fantasy 3 for the super nintendo entertainment system also referred to as final fantasy 6 with ff3 squaresoft took video game storytelling to a whole new level and in my opinion put it on par with movies as you start this epic adventure, you're thrust right into the action with an easy to understand battle system, hilarious dialogue, and pixel humor that was incredible for the time. The world of Final Fantasy feels vast and alive. There's so much exploration in this game that just when you thought it was over and you've defeated the evil Imperial General Kefka, you learn of his plan to destroy the world and make those that survive his slaves. Will he succeed, or will your ragtag team of 14 playable characters be able to defeat the evil jester turned god? You'll ride chocobos, fly airships, travel on minecarts, rebuild an entire world and save the essence of magic itself. When you've finished the game, the world is completely different, and so are you. Number 10, Resident Evil 4, Nintendo GameCube. Coming in at number 10 on our countdown is a game that took over five years to develop, had multiple scrap versions, and even birthed the Devil May Cry franchise along the way. I'm talking about Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4. The story follows Leon S. Kennedy on a mission to rescue the president's daughter, Ashley Graham, from a remote European village. Gone are the slow-moving zombies from the franchise's past, and in their stead are the relentless Los Ganados villagers, who chase the player throughout the village, castle, and island environments. They are smart too. They'll use ladders to climb up onto the rooftops, and even chainsaw doors that you have barricaded shut in their pursuit of you. Tank controls and fixed camera angles are also gone in favor of an at-the-time revolutionary over-the-shoulder camera system that has a zoomed-in perspective to allow for precise aiming where specific body parts can be targeted to open them up for attack. The new gameplay elements don't stop there, as the new inventory management system includes a Tetris-like attache case where you can rotate items to maximize your space. A mysterious merchant will sell you powerful new weapons and larger attache cases to hold more items. However, they come at a price, so be on the lookout for hidden treasures that you can find in the environments and sell them to the merchant for a high price. Ah, I'll buy it at a high price. Resident Evil 4 had it all. A 15 plus hour campaign, fan favorite returning characters, creative escort scenarios, intense over the top boss battles, a memorable quick time event night fight, a fun shooting gallery minigame, and plenty of unlockables, including an addictive mercenaries mode that has different playable characters with unique weapon loadouts in a quest to score the most points in a race against time. Resident Evil 4 expanded even further with the inclusion of additional story content in separate ways starring Ada on the PlayStation 2 port. Not only did Resident Evil 4 reinvigorate the Resident Evil franchise, but it also set the standard of what a AAA video game experience should be. Lord Sutler.
Where's everyone going? Bingo? Number 9. Chrono Trigger, Super Nintendo Entertainment System. This next pick was developed hot on the heels of Final Fantasy III. In the 90s, Squaresoft had a formula that worked. Using everything they learned from FF3, they created the epic time-traveling adventure, Chrono Trigger. Not only did they bring back Nabuo for the score, but this time they brought in arguably the most famous manga artist in the world, Akira Toriyama, best known for Dragon Ball. In this game, you take control of Chrono, a skilled swordsman and loyal friend. A chance meeting with a stranger and a failed teleportation experiment later, and you find yourself 400 years in the past. What happened? And where is the strange girl you just met? In this game, you get to explore six different time periods of the same world. You will meet ancient foes, make allies in the future, and hopefully return to your own time period while it's still recognizable. Although Chrono Trigger was a shorter adventure than FF3, it made up for that with its replayability factor. The game had 14 different endings, and which ending you saw was determined by the choices you made during the game. If you haven't already, pick up this one and go ripping through time to rescue the past and safeguard the future. Number 8 Tetris Tengen, Nintendo Entertainment System. The next game on our list is a game that I'd be shocked if anyone hasn't played before. This game was one of the first games I ever played in my life, and I absolutely love it even to this very day. And that game is none other than Tetris. Everyone knows how to play Tetris. You stack falling pieces together to help form lines horizontally and increase your score. The better you do and progress through the game, the faster the pieces fall and harder it is to form the lines. You lose when the pieces can't fall anymore and have nowhere else to go. Simple, right? Now before I get going, let me stress which version it is that I'm going to be speaking to. This game was so widely popular, it spanned across multiple platforms and had numerous variations made. The version and system I'm addressing for the countdown is the Nintendo Entertainment System, but it is not the licensed Nintendo version. It is in fact the superior version for the NES, which is the Tengen version published by Atari. This version is based off the actual arcade version of Tetris that debuted it in 1988. The Tengen version was released a year later, but sadly only had a four-week shelf life. This was due to Nintendo ending up to the rights to publish all home console versions, while Atari was left with just the arcade version. This led to Atari having to recall and destroy all inventories of the game made. Today, there are only around 100,000 copies that exist of the Tengen version. The reasons it was superior than the licensed Nintendo version is the colors were brighter, the sound was better, pieces looked sharper and more refined, and lastly, it had both one-player and two-player gameplay. The Nintendo licensed version was single-player only. What a bummer. Tetris is so popular, it spawned numerous versions like Tetris 2, Tetris Attack, Tetris Plus, Tetris World, and Tetris Effect. It also created knockoff games such as Dr. Mario, Super Puzzle Fighter, Kirby's Avalanche, and even Mortal Kombat joining the fray with Puzzle Combat. So if you haven't played Tetris in a while, you have plenty of options. It is an outstanding game that has survived the test of time and is still getting better. Give it a go. Number 7. Final Fantasy VII PlayStation Coming in at number 7 is one of the most iconic and influential games ever made in Final Fantasy 7. It was a massive success for the Sony PlayStation, both critically and commercially. Final Fantasy 7 helped popularize the Japanese role-playing genre in the United States. Thanks to the $80 million budget, 3 CDs full of content, and the full motion videos mixed with the 3D characters placed on 2D pre-rendered backgrounds, which created a very cinematic experience, Final Fantasy 7 had it all. A fun combat system with a customizable materia system amazing visuals, rewarding exploration, an epic story, lovable heroes, the ultimate villain, memorable moments, and a stellar soundtrack, and so much more. I will never forget spending hours in Midgar, recruiting characters, completing quests, and witnessing the engaging story. Finishing Midgar and thinking I was at the end of the game. 
only to realize that the game was just beginning. The world map opened up new locations to discover, provided various modes of transportation, and allowed for completely optional characters to be recruited into your main party. There was so much more waiting for me, including the mini games at the Golden Saucer, Chocobo breeding and racing, plenty of rare summon spells to track down, extremely dangerous hidden bosses to take on, limit breaks to find, and of course, witnessing one of the most emotional and heartfelt scenes in video games, especially back in 1997, as those sorts of moments just didn't happen. It was the first time I felt overwhelmed by emotion while playing a video game, because of how this moment affected not only the characters in the story, but also left a void in the gameplay as well. As tragic as this moment was, I thought it was tremendous that a video game could make me feel the way that it did, and it also cemented Sephiroth as an iconic villain. Number 6. Castlevania Symphony of the Night, PlayStation what would happen if Simon Belmont and Samus Aran did the naked tango and had a kid? Well, it would usher in a genre-defining game known as Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which would also birth a video game genre known as Metroidvanias. This is where you play a non-linear game and get new weapons and power-ups, which allows you to backtrack and get to parts of the game that were once inaccessible. This 1994 PS1 action role-playing game was made with the help of legendary director Koji Igarashi. You play as Alucard, returning from Castlevania 3 to explore the 2D side-scrolling masterpiece. Your goal is to find five pieces of Dracula and five bosses used to meet up with a final showdown of Nosferatu himself, a la Castlevania 2. This 32-bit gem used gorgeous graphics, big sprites, and one of the most memorable orchestral soundtracks of all time, including hits Bloody Tears, Wandering Ghosts, Rainbow Cemetery, and my favorite, Lost Painting. The game we in role-playing elements such as hit points, magic points, four different attributes, experience points to level up, and magic could be used to wield familiars to help you on your perilous journey in meeting up with the Dark Lord himself. There are plenty of weapons and sub-weapons to put old Drac in his place. Eat your heart out, Dad. One of the coolest features is when you stake Dracula and beat the game. The castle inverts! And now you must beat all new enemies and bosses. The game makes great use of the map, so you know how much of the castle you completed and what remains. The game has great control as you have full movement of your character throughout, whether you're a bat, wolf, or mist. This highly acclaimed game should be enjoyed by all. I suggest you try to get blood from a stone by trying to 100% this opus. As the band Devo once said, crack that whip. What are you waiting for? Play this game yesterday. Number 5, Super Metroid, Super Nintendo Entertainment System. The last Metroid is in captivity. The galaxy is at peace. Up next on our list is a game that took immersion to the next level. Credited for establishing the Metroidvania genre, Super Metroid is truly an incredible gaming experience. Nintendo was able to combine amazing music and environments together to create a truly beautiful alien planet for you to explore. With Super Metroid, developers were able to create a living world so immersive that you really felt like you were Samus Aran. How they achieved this with only 16 bits will always be a mystery. Super Metroid was an epic adventure that combined treasure hunting, puzzle solving, gunfighting, and platforming. A true example of the magic that happens when music is perfectly scored to fit the scene that you're playing. I have fond memories of staying up late, exploring caves of Norfair, or the skeletons of the wrecked ship under the glow of just the TV. Although Super Metroid was a side-scroller, the world was so vast that exploration was crucial. Getting to every corner of the planet netted you stronger weapons, armor, but could also uncover more deadly foes. Can you find the source of the mysterious distress call sent from the planet Zebes and return safely? Super Metroid. Number 4, The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Holy Hyrule, Batman! The next game is The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. 
This is the third game in the series, as Zelda 2 The Adventures of Link was met with mixed opinions. This action-adventure RPG made for the Super Nintendo brought the series back to the top in 1992 under legendary producer Shigeru Miyamoto. They created a story that took place before the first two games as you control Link as he travels through Hyrule to defeat the demon pig king Ganon and rescue family of the Seven Sages. Once again, you are in a top-down perspective with timeless cartoon-esque graphics and a brilliant orchestral soundtrack. The story is captivating and immersive. The NPCs you meet are funny and helpful, and because this is an action-adventure RPG that takes roughly 15 or 20 hours to complete, you have the ability to save your quest. And what player hasn't smacked around the Kukos in Kakariko Village and watched them peck you from all directions? There are the overworld and underworld to explore as Link defeats bosses while retrieving heart containers to level up. Dungeons contain large chests which have necessary equipment to beat the game. You have the Master Sword, Shield, and a multitude of weapons, and even items like the Lantern which use magic points. One of the coolest features in Link to the Past is traveling between the light and dark worlds. Can you stop Aganem the Evil Wizard, Ganon the Dark Lord, retrieve the Triforce, and make all right in the world again? including rescuing Zelda once again, deja vu. Experience the glory and fun of one of the best games on the Super Nintendo. You will soon see why this is hailed as one of the greatest games ever made and takes the elements of the first Legend of Zelda and puts it on its head with the sweet injection of gaming steroids. Now listen to Ganon's fight theme as you restore Hyrule to its grandeur. Number 3, Super Mario World, Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Back in 1991, when you got your Super Nintendo, chances are you put in Super Mario World. Under series creator Shigeru Miyamoto, he took the best elements of Super Mario and Super Mario 3 and injected it with magic mushrooms, making one of the greatest video games ever made, selling over 20 million copies worldwide. It totally used all of the system's horsepower to create things like Mode 7, to giant colorful sprites, and a memorable soundtrack from songs like Athletic Theme with its wild upbeat piano sounds, to the eerie echoes of the Underworld and Ghost House, and the epic drums and sparkle of Vanilla Dome. You play Mario in this 2D parallax scrolling platform adventure on his mission to rescue Princess Peach from the clutches of Bowser and the Koopalink through 96 levels of gaming glory. The game introduces new features such as flying or floating with the cape feather and pea balloon. A cool new spin jump, a green dinosaur Yoshi that you could ride and spit shells or fire, a new way to store power-ups for later, hidden keys scattered throughout the game that give you a new level or a star road which could lead you to the special world. It is a real challenge to unlock everything and will test the metal of the best platform players. Thankfully, there is a continue feature where you spawn from your last save point. Mamma Mia! There's even a multiplayer option to play two players by alternating turns at choosing levels. Long live Luigi! This is an absolute must play and one of the greatest games of all time. Number 2, Super Mario Bros. 3, Nintendo Entertainment System. This next game on our top 25 list is my absolute favorite game for the Nintendo Entertainment System, and that is Super Mario Bros. 3. This game has it all and introduced so many new elements to the Mario series, I still don't know how this game even exists on an 8-bit cartridge. The game still has familiar characters we all know and love, Mario, Luigi, Toad, Princess Peach, and the evil Bowser, but it also introduces us for the first time to Bowser's children, or the Koopa Kids as I like to call them. Mario 3 also shows off a world map for the first time that now has become a staple for all Mario games since then. There are a total of 8 worlds or kingdoms in Mario 3 and they each have their own uniqueness within them. There is a desert, water, gigantic, ice, and the final flame world just to name a few. All worlds now have mid castles to complete as well as the final battle, which in this case is aboard a flying ship that each one of Bowser's kids occupy. 
Defeat them, and you defeat the world and restore peace to it. Also in each world are mushroom houses that give you a random power-up you select from a treasure chest, the opportunity to match power-up picks to gain extra lives, which created lots of stress and anxiety for me personally, and a showdown one-on-one -on -one with an enemy to collect a random item. Now along with all these new enemies and worlds, Mario and Luigi also gave new tools for them to use as well to help even the odds. You still have the familiar mushroom, fire flower, and star power-ups, but you also are introduced to some new ones that aid our heroes. You have the Super Leaf and Tanuki Suit, which for the first time allow for flight. The Tanuki Suit also gains the ability for a statue morph, which aids in disguise, and if you do it in the air, gives the ability for a ground stop for the first time ever that kills an enemy you land on. The Frog Suit allows for better swimming speeds in the water and higher, longer jumps on land. The final suit, the Hammer Suit, gives the character the ability to throw hammers like the Hammer Brothers in Mario 1, but also lets you dodge fire attacks when you crouch. Again, all these things I have stated are new for the Mario franchise within a single game, which is just insane, honestly. This game is single or two player, which makes for a fun time solo or with a buddy. So do yourself a favor and check out Super Mario Bros. 3 if you haven't yet. I promise you won't be disappointed. Number 1. The Last of Us. PlayStation 3. Here. What's this? Your birthday? You kept complaining about your broken watch. So, I uh, figured, you know. You like it? I think this is... It's what? nice, but I... I think it's stuck. It's not... What? No, 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 no. Oh, ha, ha. Where did you get the money for this? <laughs> drugs. I sell hardcore drugs. Oh, good. We started helping out with the mortgage then. <laughs> yeah, you wish. If you watched the previous selection episodes on my channel, and you've been following along, you already most likely figured out what game I'm going to talk about. You know, sometimes you come across something at a certain point in your life, and it changes you. It changes the expectation of what's to come. It makes you feel things you might not have felt before. It touches you on an almost visceral, primal level. That, at its core, is The Last of Us. This game is a multimedia masterpiece. So what the heck do I mean by that? I'm talking story narrative, scope, size and magnitude of the themes being conveyed, the lifelike real human conversations and emotions, not to mention the real world interactions between characters that is not something you would normally find in a video game, but rather a big budget Hollywood movie with A-list talent. This is a story about Joel and Ellie, but more simply, it's a story about love and loss. It's about finding something worth holding on to and fighting for finding something or someone that you care about more than you care about yourself and you are willing to do anything to keep it safe. It's really about, as humans, we crave to love and be loved in return. So whoa, 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 what's with all this touchy-feely crapola? This is a game about survival in a post-apocalyptic world where society has fallen into ruin with only pockets of humanity remaining. Cordyceps, a human-eating fungus, has made the jump and has created human-like fungus abominations that you must fight, flee, or hide from, such as clickers, hunters, bloaters, oh my! Clickers who are blind but could hear everything, and when they do, you better haul mushroom ass. Hunters who could see but can't hear as well and hunt in packs by being stealthy, good luck trying to shiv them. Bloaters, big hulking pus balls of cordycep feces. If they see you, look out. They're like tanks. And the most dangerous are the humans. Fedra, army with military weapons and tanks. Fireflies, desperate factions who want a cure. Crazy survivalists. And even scent tracking dogs. Be smart and stealthy. Uh, all right, all right, all right. I'll give you that. But you know, what about Okay, this? hold on, hold on. Now you guys are both onto something here, but we cannot forget about the stellar gameplay, which allows you the flexibility to cause a scene with multiple firearms and the ability to craft bombs to assist you when things get tough. 
but be careful to draw too much attention as those clickers are attracted to sound just like Wolf said, and they're vicious foes, which is why I prefer to take the stealth approach. I like to sneak up behind my enemies and use those shivs that I crafted right in the neck when they least expect it. It adds to the realism of the game and allows me to save those precious resources. Trust me, you're going to need all of them if you attempt the hardest difficulty grounded. It turns the game into a survival horror where every bullet and crafting material is hard to come by, which encourages more scavenging and exploration, but in return puts you in even greater danger as you never know what's around the corner. This holds true for the stellar online multiplayer factions mode and the additional left behind story DLC as well. All right. Yep. I, I hear you both. I hear you. And I agree with everything that you both said, which is why this game in particular found its place as the number one retro console game in our totally awesome top 25 list. I shot the hell out of that guy, huh? Yeah, you sure did. I feel sick. And you just hang back like I told you to. Well, you're glad I didn't, right? I'm glad I didn't get my head blown off by a goddamn kid. You know what? No. How about, hey, Ellie, I, I know it wasn't easy, but it was either him or me. Thanks for saving my ass. You got anything like that for me, Joel? We gotta get going. Lead the way. And here are our individual top 25 games list that we brought into the roundtable discussion where we discussed, debated, agreed, and disagreed until we locked in our combined top 25 list, which you can see all three parts over on Dantron69K's YouTube channel, which I will provide links in the description below. We'd love to hear your feedback on our list. What did we get right? What did we get wrong? And what would your personal snub game be that missed our list? Leave a comment down below and let us know. We would love to hear it. This took a tremendous amount of time and collaboration to produce, so if you enjoyed it, please remember to hit that like button, subscribe to our channels, and let us know if you'd be interested in seeing a continuation of this series, perhaps a top 50 to 26 countdown. We appreciate all of your support, and I want to thank Dantron69K, Wolfman, Problem Solved with Eric, and Wales for being a part of this crossover event. It was a lot of fun, and I hope the community enjoys it. And remember, we're in the endgame now. <laughs>